Beekeepers, um, this is an information video that I probably spent four hours on my butt in front of the computer searching website after website, link after link, and I found some information that probably a lot of you don't, don't know because I certainly didn't know about it. Uh, years ago, I used to use Paramount, and then as I was walking to the hardware store, I, for whatever reason, I grabbed the jar or the can of... Uh, Enzos uh, ice crystals, and they had the same ingredient as paradise chloral benzene. So uh, there was a at that time there was a six percent ratio. So um, I figured, well, that six percent of inert ingredients really wasn't going to make any difference. So I started using that, and it's worked great. But uh, I, I was always wondering why Paramoth was fifteen dollars a pound, and the Moth crystals are five dollars a pound. So um, at the beginning, paramoth was a hundred percent paradise chlorobenzene, hundred percent, and the moth crystals were ninety nine point six four percent. So I wanted to find out what the inert ingredients were and. This one guy, his name was, uh, this is on an old post back in 2002 from B Source. This guy's named James Burke. He was asking the same questions I was about the inert ingredients between uh, the generic moth crystals and, and uh, paramoth. Well, two names popped up real quick. And, and these two guys have probably forgotten more about beekeeping than I'll ever know. So I went right to them. And it was uh, Don the Fat Bee Man. He said he'd been using uh, the ice crystals, or mothballs, he calls them, for over 20 years. And the only difference he can see is uh, the cost. But he said when he sees the moth crystals dropping down, he just puts a whole lot extra in the stored boxes. Didn't like to hear that. But uh, then Michael Bush, he starts talking about using um, paradichlorobenzene. And... Um, and then a day later he starts talking about it again and then he just says that he's been using the bacterial method which is the BT, the Bacillus thuringiensis, I think it's pronounced. But anyway, uh, he just, Michael Bush said the only thing he's found to work is a hard freeze. So the guy was asking the questions that I wanted to know, James Burke, and he left his, um, his um, website for Emerald Ridge uh, apiary.net. So I went on there to see if I could ask him a question, see what he found out. I think he's no longer in business because it came up zip. So from there started my quest. And this is what I found out. <clears throat> from 1995 to 2004, Paramoth was 100%. Then in 2003 and 2014, Enzo's moth ice crystals were 99.94 with inert of 6%. But now, I don't know if anybody realized what was going on, now Paramount since 2013 is uh, 99.94, which the same as the Enzos was with the inert of uh, 6 tenths. And now the Enzos is 99.90 with the inert ingredients of 10%. So it kind of looks like maybe they changed their formulation for strictly marketing purposes. Uh, Paramoth may have, uh, which is the trade name made by Man Lake, Paramoth increased their inert quantities for caking or whatever. Whenever something says inert, it's got to be that it's not hazardous to humans. It could be salt, so... Um, waxes, anything like that. So from there I went on to um, <laughs> my trail of paperwork. In September 28, 1995, every time you make a change you've got to file a report with the EPA. And at that time they were 100% active ingredients. Now the master label for Enzos was 99.94, 6%, and that was on the uh, December 15th, 2003. These are two numbers, too, right here for the EPA numbers. If you want to look them up, that uh, 
gives you whatever the EPA, what decisions were made. Now, in 2013, in November, Man Lake changed the formula. As you can see right here, now they are 99.94 with 6% inert ingredients. And with the, um, once again with EPA, and this is Will at Home Products who makes Enzos in June 18th of 2014, now they changed it to 10% right here. So, I, um, in my opinion, I think what they did is they changed the formulation so that Man Lake could always say, well, yeah, this is, you know, strictly paramoth for wax or wax moths. And uh, Enzos could always say, well, you know, ours is just for moths in general. Now, the one thing that really was an eye-opener for me was the, uh, this is an archive document from the, believe me, I, I'm not a chemist or a, uh, a um, some type of reporter that investigates things. This is just stuff that I found that I want to share with you. And this is the, um, what the EPA says about um, paradichlorobenzene. In the short term, it causes nausea, vomiting, headaches, irritation of the eyes and respiratory tract. In the long term, and this is the, um, what they call the maximum contamination levels, the MCLs. <clears throat> it causes anemia, skin lesions, appetite loss, which actually I could probably use right there myself, uh, liver damage, and changes in the blood. So that was the scary part for me right there. Um, these right here, that's the pronunciation for BT. That's the bacteria. The uh, do not use Napoline mothballs, whatever you do, do not use it. These are the two websites that I used the National Pesticide Information Center and the EPA. Now, what I'm going to do if you saw my video using these seals, these seals work so well and it keeps the vapor of the paramoth, which only gets activated when it's exposed to the air or oxygen and it turns into a gas, is these things work so well to keep it in, what I'm going to do from now on is I'm going to use Paramoth because it seems to work the best for the eggs, for the larva, for the moths that are in the stored comb, but I'm not leaving it in there all winter long. I'm going to put it in for three, four days so there's a complete exchange and the fumigation starts and then I'm going to yank it out. Um, because you you know, you've got one of three things. You can either use the BT or you can storm, you know, an open airy place with a lot of sunlight and hope for the best. Or you can use the paradichlorobenzene. Uh, uh, for me, I'm going to stay with the Paramoth or the Enzos equivalent and um, just don't store it in there for a long period of time. That way, the three, four days, it'll kill everything that's in there. When you take it out, you seal it back up. That will stay clean until you need it in the spring. So anyway, I know this may have been kind of boring, kind of a doofy uh, video, but uh, it's just a lot of things that I learned that I didn't know, and I just wanted to share it with you folks. So anyway, have a good day and good luck with your bees.